Hello there, everybody. Good morning. My name is Christine. I um, live in Western Pennsylvania, Tick Central, and I am going to do a series of videos, uh, this being my first, that talks about Lyme disease. Lyme disease and its co-infections, um, and just try to shed some light on this topic. There are so many myths um, and just so much information out there and so much information that needs to be out there. And so the purpose of what I'm trying to do, it's twofold. One is my desire to help others. Uh, I believe we're here to serve others. And so I think doing this allows me to do that. And uh, just to document my journey as well, because it's a very convoluted disease to have. And so I wanted today's video really just to focus on just some of the basics. This is going to be a short one. Uh, the videos that will follow are going to be more in depth. But for today, just touch on a few basics about Lyme disease. Um, one of them is if you have a tick bite and you do not get a bullseye rash, that does not mean that Lyme disease and a lot of these other co-infections, you'll hear me talk about that a lot, it um, doesn't mean that you don't have Lyme. You don't have to have a bullseye rash to have Lyme disease. Please understand that this is extremely important. You may have Lyme disease and never even realize you had a tick bite. You may never pull a tick off of yourself. You may have had a tick latch on, transmit the disease, fall off, and, and you don't even know. So that's important that that's, that, that is understood. Uh, the second piece to that is it is really important that you understand a tick does not have to be attached to you for 48 to 72 hours to transmit Lyme disease or a, a million of these other co-infections and viruses and things that they can, they can transmit. So if you, let's say that it's Saturday morning and you and the kids are at the soccer field and you are just watching, you're a bystander and you have a tick that attaches to your shin and you get home that night and you realize that, oh boy, when I was at the field, I got a tick on my shin and you dig this tick out and you use some sort of antiseptic to clean that area and you don't get a bullseye rash. The tick has only been on you maybe eight hours, whatnot. You go to Med Express or wherever, not not saying, you know, not trying to throw shade on them and just anywhere, even a doctor, a PCP or an ER um, and let them know that, hey, I pulled this tick off. They don't see a bullseye rash and they don't, and they know it's only been on eight hours. They're not gonna treat you. Um, they're not going to give you a test uh, and they're not going to, they're, they're going to blow you off. So I'm here to tell you that when you got bitten by that tick at nine in the morning and you took that tick off of you at seven o'clock that afternoon or that evening, I'm sorry, it doesn't mean you don't have Lyme disease. It doesn't mean you didn't get a disease transmitted from that tick. Please understand that. Um, if I were you, I would wait a couple of days and I would go to my primary care physician and I would ask for a test called the Western Blot, B-L-O-T. Don't let them give you the ELISA, E-L-I-S-A test. It is worthless, absolutely worthless. You need to get a Western Blot to see if there are any antibodies in your system that are going to indicate maybe a prior infection or indicate that you have something going on currently. So any tick bite needs to be taken very seriously. You're not always going to get a rash and it doesn't matter how long that tick has been on you. Personally, maybe you don't know how long that tick has been on you. And if I were to get a tick bite, I would, when I went to the doctor, I would let them know, I don't know how long it's been on me because you don't know. And so it maybe it has been on you 72 hours. And so I would just indicate to that, that professional, I don't know how long it's been on. Can you please do a Western blot test? Because the ELISA, ELISA, however they pronounce it, is inaccurate. Um, that's a good start. And 
I will also tell you that you're gonna have some places that are gonna say, oh, here's a one-time dose, we caught it early, it'll work. If they're gonna give you two capsules of 100 milligrams each of doxycycline, that's not gonna do anything for you. It's gonna do nothing for you. If you had a disease transmission, that's not gonna do it. That's not gonna help you. Letting you know that right up front. So I would see my PCP, ask for the Western blot, let them know you don't know how long that tick has been on you and go from there. There's so much more to all of this because there are so many other diseases that can be transmitted. I'm going to do another video and I might do it today. I'm bored. I don't have a lot going on because I'm sick and I'm on medical leave because I have all these other co-infections. So I'll probably do a separate video. But that is the one-on-one -on -one, or the one, 101, the one-on-one -on -one that affects your brain too, um, online. So um, hello to everybody out there. I, I hope that um, as time goes on, people see these videos as being helpful. Please subscribe. Uh, as I said, I'm off from work because I am sick and I'll be doing a bunch of them. And I'm gonna talk about co-infections. I'm gonna talk about what kind of doctor you need to go to, um, what kind of antibiotics treat what, and also um, just the co-infections, detoxing, uh, what you can do with herbal supplements if you're somebody that doesn't like to take um, prescribed medications. And, and I have an herbalist uh, on board for my treatment and I wanna help and I wanna educate. And this is gonna be part of, this is, this is my purpose in life. Um, this is my purpose. And so I would love to help anybody out there struggling with the same thing. This is no joke. Lyme disease is no joke. It can take your life and people are not taking that seriously. You can die from it, okay? I'm not being melodramatic. It needs to be taken serious. If you get a tick bite, you need to take it serious, okay? Love and light to all of you out there, and I look forward to hopefully helping everybody that I can. Have a wonderful weekend.